Does the name Sir Robert Norberton recall anything? A little. Oh. <laughs> He's got a horse running in the Champion Stakes. He lives at Shoscombe Hall. The stables are known locally as Shoscombe Old Place. But you don't know the man himself? He has a reputation for being rather a dangerous man. How dangerous? I remember an incident some months ago when he horsewhipped a man on Newmarket Heath. Samuel Brewer, the Curzon Street moneylender. What was the reason for this assault? Well, I imagine that Sir Robert had a grudge against moneylenders. All is heavily in their debt. Well, by all accounts, he's so far down Queer Street, he may never find his way back again. I received a letter from John Mason, the head trainer at Shoscombe. It arrived an hour ago. Dear Mr. Holmes, in the interests of my employer, Sir Robert Norberton, I should like to visit you to discuss a matter of the utmost urgency. Now, the, the truth is, Sir Robert has got to win this race. He's up to his neck, and it's his last chance. He's wagered everything he could raise or borrow on the horse, and he's holding off his creditors till after the big race. In the event of financial catastrophe, would Sir Robert have any claim on his sister's estate? None at all, if, as far as I know. She only has a life interest, and it reverts to her husband's brother after her death. In the meantime, her ladyship draws the rents every year. And her brother spends them. She loves the horses as much as he does. Or at least uh, she did. Every day at about 12, she'd ride down to the stables to see them. And above all, she loved the prince. But for the past week, her ladyship has driven past the stables with never so much as a good morning. Do you think there's been some sort of quarrel? No, he never goes near her. She hardly leaves her room, except to take her daily drive. And I assume that you have witnessed such a disagreement? But why else would he give away her, her pet spaniel, Mr. Holmes? She loved that dog as if it were her child. Can you think of any reason why Sir Robert would wish to upset his sister in this fashion? Not at all. It's a cruel way to treat a woman with a weak heart. They're damn rotten. When did Sir Robert give away his sister's dog? A week ago today, Jasper was howling like a banshee at the mill house. But that was no good reason for the master to do what he did. Does Lady Beatrice have a companion? Her maid, Mr. Holmes. Just the one? Carrie Evans. She's been with her this five years. Perhaps there is something that you have not told us. There's a central heating furnace in the cellar. It's been off for some time, but Sir Robert complained of cold and had it on again. Harvey runs it. He's one of my lads. He didn't like the look of it, Mr. Holmes. Human? Without a doubt. Out for a bit of fishing, eh? We thought we might try and land a pike or two at the whole lake. And you might find yourselves in the lake before you were through. Why is that? Uh, Sir Robert is terrible jealous of anyone who might be spying on his stables. Well, we're not touts. Uh, he's the sort that strikes first and speaks afterwards. I think we should take a little walk before lunch. Oh, that's a splendid idea. Do you think we can take the dog with us, landlord? By all means, gentlemen. Jasper! Jasper! Come on, boy. Hello, boy. How are you? Hey, hello. Jasper, here. Mm. Do I know you? No, but evidently Jasper knows you. You must be Sandy Bay. Yes, sir. It was you that brought Jasper to the tavern last week. He's always such a quiet dog. Well, something must have happened to him. At the old church. It was the same morning I brought him to the Green Dragon. It's an old ruined chapel. And under it, there's a crypt which has a bad name among us. Jasper! How far are we 
we away from the falls? Uh, about a quarter of a mile, sir. I'm correct in thinking that Lady Beatrice takes a drive about midday. Yes, sir. Thank you. We've got a moment to lose. Come, Jasper. Come, Watson. Come, Margaret. Stop the carriage, Watson. Stop the carriage. The dog. Does that suggest nothing to you? Well, Carrie Evans is determined to keep the dog and her mistress apart. So. There is an alternative. instant or I'll call for Sir Robert. Sir Robert knows that I'm here. Please, Miss Evans, will you sit down? I know appearances are against me, but you must believe that I could act in no other way. I can promise you nothing. I've always known that if Beatrice died, the estate would revert to my brother-in-law's family. Everything would be seized, including the stables and the horses. Oh, Mr. Holmes, my sister did die just a week ago. And you told no one? I had little alternative, but if I could stave things off until the race, I knew all might be well. Her own doctor would certify that for months her symptoms had threatened such an end. Joe Barnes came to see me in search of work a day or two before Beatrice died. He seemed a trustworthy lad, and it came into my mind that he might, for a short time, impersonate my dear sister. It was but a case of appearing daily in her carriage, for no one need enter her room, save Miss Evans, of course, I had to take her into my confidence. On the first night, Joe and I carried it out to the old mill house. We were followed by her pet spaniel, which afterwards howled continually at the door. So I felt some safer place was needed. I got rid of the dog, and we carried Beatrice to the crypt of the church. As to the old relics which we took from the coffin, Joe and I removed them. He descended from the bedroom at night and burned them in the furnace. But how you suspected her death, I cannot imagine. Well, yesterday, when Miss Evans ordered the carriage to drive on, I concluded that she was afraid of something. I suspected that something was Jasper. Miss Evans knew the dogs do not make mistakes. He would have known that it wasn't his mistress. But we must leave all this for the police. But why? A day or two is all I need. Say nothing yet, I beg of you. The race will have been run. 
my nightmare might be over. I loved Beatrice with all my heart. That does not entitle you to break the law. Listen to this, Holmes. Following the success of Shoskin Prince in yesterday's champion stakes, Sir Robert has received sufficient winnings to settle all his debts with enough left to re-establish him in a fair position in life. Ah. However, the victory was marred by the sudden death of Sir Robert's sister, Lady Beatrice Falder, whose love of horses was at least as great as his own. instant or I'll call for Sir Robert. Sir Robert knows that I'm here. Please, Miss Evans, will you sit down? I know appearances are against me, but you must believe that I could act in no other way. I can promise you nothing. I've always known that if Beatrice died, the estate would revert to my brother-in-law's family. Everything would be seized, including the stables and the horses. Oh, Mr. Holmes, my sister did die just a week ago. And you told no one? I had little alternative, but if I could stave things off until the race, I knew all might be well. Her own doctor would certify that for months her symptoms had threatened such an end. Joe Barnes came to see me in search of work a day or two before Beatrice died. He seemed a trustworthy lad, and it came into my mind that he might, for a short time, impersonate my dear sister. It was but a case of appearing daily in her carriage, for no one need enter her room save Miss Evans, of course, I had to take her into my confidence. On the first night, Joe and I carried it out to the old mill house. We were followed by her pet spaniel, which afterwards howled continually at the door. So I felt some safer place was needed. I got rid of the dog, and we carried Beatrice to the crypt of the church. As to the old relics which we took from the coffin, Joe and I removed them. He descended from the bedroom at night and burned them in the furnace. But how you suspected her death, I cannot imagine. Well, yesterday, when Miss Evans ordered the carriage to drive on, I concluded that she was afraid of something. I suspected that something was Jasper. Miss Evans knew the dogs did not make mistakes. He would have known that it wasn't his mistress. But we must leave all this for the police. But why? A day or two is all I need. Say nothing yet, I beg of you. The race will have been run. Oh, Mr. Holmes, my sister did die just a week ago. And you told no one? I had little alternative. But if I could stave things off until the race, I knew all might be well. Her own doctor would certify that for months her symptoms had threatened such an end. Joe Barnes came to see me in search of work a day or two before Beatrice died. He seemed a trustworthy lad, and it came into my mind that he might, for a short time, impersonate my dear sister. It was but a case of appearing daily in her carriage, for no one need enter her room save Miss Evans. Of course, I had to take her into my confidence. On the first night, Joe and I carried it out to the old mill house. We were followed by her pet spaniel, 
which afterwards howled continually at the door. So I felt some safer place was needed. I got rid of the dog, and we carried Beatrice to the crypt of the church. As to the old relics which we took from the coffin, Joe and I removed them. He descended from the bedroom at night and burned them in the furnace. But how you suspected her death, I cannot imagine. Well, yesterday, when Miss Evans ordered the carriage to drive on, I concluded that she was afraid of something. I suspected that something was Jasper. Miss Evans knew the dogs do not make mistakes. He would have known that it wasn't his mistress. But we must leave all this for the police. But why? A day or two is all I need. Say nothing yet, I beg of you. The race will have been run, and my nightmare might be over. I loved Beatrice with all my heart. That does not entitle you to break the law. Listen to this, Holmes. Following the success of Shoskin Prince in yesterday's champion stakes, Sir Robert has received sufficient winnings to settle all his debts with enough left to re-establish him in a fair position in life. Ah. However, the victory was marred by the sudden death of Sir Robert's sister, Lady Beatrice Falder, whose love of horses was at least as great as his own. I'm correct in thinking that Lady Beatrice takes a drive about midday. Yes, sir. Thank you. We've got a moment to lose. Come, Jasper. Come, Watson. Come, uh, this... Stop the carriage, Watson. Stop the carriage. Excuse me. Directors to the Green Dragon Tavern. The dog. Does that suggest nothing to you? No. Carrie Evans is determined to keep the dog and her mistress apart. So. There is an alternative. instant or I'll call for Sir Robert. Sir Robert knows that I'm here. Please, Miss Evans, will you sit down?
I know appearances are against me, but you must believe that I could act in no other way. <laughs> 